Let us begin with <laughs> some words of praise. Uh, if you'll join in the words in yellow. Come, let us praise your name. Let us sing for joy. You, Lord, have loved us with an everlasting love, a love like no other, a love that transcends our souls, a love that lasts eternally. We praise and give you thanks. Thank, Thank you, Lord, for your love and for us forever. <clears throat> and we will now have our first hymn, which is Give Thanks to the Lord, our God and King. Right, this morning I've uh, brought a friend along with me, um, and some of you will have met him before, and it's, it's Jack. But I haven't seen him recently, have you? Yeah, no. Seems to have disappeared. No, not since Jack, where are you? Perhaps if we all shout for Jack, he might appear. <coughs> Jack! 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 Hello, Jack! Where have you been? Uh, I was in the car park helping Bill cave up the leaves. Really? Are you telling me the truth? Uh, <laughs> well, I wanted to, but it was it was much more fun playing in all the leaves. That was great. Well, I hope you didn't make a mess. So is autumn your favourite time of year then? Um. Yeah, well, I love autumn because it's, oh yeah, get to play in the leaves, but um, I like spring as well. Oh yes, spring is so lovely, isn't it? All the daffodils and snowdrops. Yeah. And <laughs> Easter eggs, yeah! Oh, what do you like? I like summer as well. Sun, sea, sand, and ice cream with a chocolate flake in, yeah! Oh, and I like winter too. I bet that's because you like your chocolate in your advent calendar. No, it's because it's Jesus' birthday. And I get presents and lots of chocolate. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get it. You love chocolate. But talking about Jesus' birthday, do you know why Jesus was born? Uh, so I can have chocolate? No. <laughs> It's because God loves you. God loves me? Are you sure? Yes, God loves you and me and everybody who's here today. God sent Jesus to save us. We just need to turn to God and believe in him and we will have everlasting life with God. Isn't that wonderful news? Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess so. So, even when I mess up, God still loves me? Yes, even then. God loves you. And when we mess up or do wrong things, if we ask him, he will forgive us. Brilliant. Uh, can, I, can I sing a song about love? I, I know a song about love. Can we have that? Is that okay? I think that's a great idea. Well, and... Okay, if Mia joins me. Of course it is. It'd be nice to see Mia as well. Hi, Mia. Hello. <laughs> the reading is Ephesians 2, verses 1 to 10. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used <coughs> to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the earth, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following, and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace that you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the holy realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace 
expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light, because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light, and will not come into the light, for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light, so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. Praise the Lord. Amen. We've been thinking about different seasons, and autumn is one of my favourite times of the year. Um, when I was out walking recently, the leaves were just falling off the trees, the conkers were dropping, and the acorns and they just about missed my head. Um, the colours of the leaves were so vibrant and beautiful, all different shapes and colours, and they even glistened with the dew. It then struck me how it reminded me of a verse in the Bible, which, actually, which isn't actually about autumn at all, but is the foundation of what being a Christian is all about. It was the verse from the Bible that we read from John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Jesus brought such joy, hope and love into the world through his birth, actions and teachings, but yet he also died a horrible death. But just like the leaves <coughs> die and provide nourishment to the ground over the winter, so that in spring new life sprouts up and blesses us once more with colour and beauty, so too did Jesus. He died so we too can have everlasting life. But unlike the leaves that keep dying, Jesus died once and for all. Then being raised to life, he ascended into heaven. In Ephesians, it says, But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. Even though the autumn leaves look beautiful, a few days later, they were dirty, dull, wet and slimy. These now reminded me of the sinful lives we lead, the bad things that separate us from God. In Isaiah 64 verse 6 it tells us, like, like autumn leaves we wither and fall, and our sins sweep us away like the wind. So we were dead to God swept away because of our sinful ways. But God so loved us, he wanted to find a way to bring us back to himself. He loved us so much, he went to the trouble and anguish of sending us his son to come down from heaven and to live among us, to humble himself to being human and to show us the right way to live. God sacrificed his son so that everyone, that includes you and me, can have everlasting life with God. Paul reminds us we are made alive with Christ, that it is only by God's grace that we are saved, through faith and not by works. At the end of the passage in Ephesians, in verse 10, it says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. So every one of us is God's handiwork, 
The New Living Translation actually says, we are God's masterpiece, and I quite like that version. <laughs> In the beginning, God formed us, but through our sin, we have been damaged and changed and distanced from God. But we can create us, but he can create us anew through Christ Jesus. He can cleanse us and bring us back to himself. He can reshape and reform us so we can do good things he planned for us all along. This is all possible because of his great love for us. Each one of us is unique. Just like the leaves were different, we are different. Different colours, shapes, different backgrounds, different countries. We are all loved by God, but it's up to each one of us to accept his love and his mercy for ourselves. So let us just be reminded once again of that verse. For God so loved the world, that includes you and me, that he gave his only son. Jesus was born, crucified and raised to life. That whoever believes in him, we have a choice, shall not perish but have eternal life, that we will live forever with God. So when we accept God's love, our lives change. We then start to radiate God's love as well as inwardly knowing God's love. We will also show it outwardly in our lives by the way we act or the things that we say. Just in case you're not convinced or you want to just be reminded of how much God loves you, did you know God has written you a love letter? He's written one to each and every one of us. And we're going to hear it now. You may like to watch this video or you may like to just close your eyes and listen to what God is saying. The words you are about to experience are true. They will change your life if you let them. For they come from the very heart of God. He loves you. And He is the Father you have been looking for all your life. This is His love letter to you. My child, you may not know me, but I know everything about you. I know when you sit down and when you rise up. I am familiar with all your ways. Even the very hairs on your head are numbered, for you were made in my image. In me you live and move and have your being. For you were my offspring. I knew you even before you were conceived. I chose you when I planned creation. You were not a mistake. For all your days are written in my book. I determined the exact time of your birth and where you would live. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. I knit you together in your mother's womb and brought you forth on the day you were born. I have been misrepresented by those who don't know me. I am not distant and angry, but am the complete expression of love. And it is my desire to lavish my love on you, simply because you are my child and I am your father. I offer you more than your earthly father ever could, for I am the perfect father. Every good gift that you receive comes from my hand, for I am your provider and I meet all your needs. My plan for your future has always been filled with hope, because I love you with an everlasting love. My thoughts toward you are countless as the sand on the seashore, 
and I rejoice over you with singing. I will never stop doing good to you, for you are my treasured possession. I desire to establish you with all my heart and all my soul, and I want to show you great and marvelous things. If you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. Delight in me, and I will give you the desires of your heart, for it is I who gave you those desires. I am able to do more for you than you could possibly imagine, for I am your greatest encourager. I am also the Father who comforts you in all your troubles. When you are brokenhearted, I am close to you. As a shepherd carries a lamb, I have carried you close to my heart. One day, I will wipe away every tear from your eyes, and I'll take away all the pain you have suffered on this earth. I am your Father, and I love you even as I love my Son Jesus. For in Jesus, my love for you is revealed. He is the exact representation of my being. He came to demonstrate that I am for you, not against you, and to tell you that I am not counting your sins. Jesus died so that you and I could be reconciled. His death was the ultimate expression of my love for you. I gave up everything I love that I might gain your love. If you receive the gift of my Son Jesus, you receive me, and nothing will ever separate you from my love again. Come home, and I'll throw the biggest party heaven has ever seen. I have always been father, and will always be father. My question is: Will you be my child? I am waiting for you. Love your dad. Almighty God. Someone has cleverly put together the various lines of the Bible to write this letter. But it's all true. They are words from the Bible, from God, to you and to me. To me, there's nothing more to say than to accept God's love. But what will your response be? So we're now going to have a time of reflection. And you might want to have a look at that love letter again for yourselves. And on the tables you will find there are copies of it. If, if there isn't enough, just let me know. I can get some more. Um, you might want to write a letter back to God. You might want to just say thank you to him. Or you might just want to talk to somebody. Because it could have just hit home uh, how much God loves you. Or you might want to like reread the Bible passages. As well as that, on your table there's some leaves. And because of God's love, we're going to use these 
in response um, to God's love for us in our prayers of intercession when we pray for our world and our country and for people that we know in our town. Um, so please, if you can, put something on the leaves and put them on the, the board and we'll use those in our prayers later. There's also a mindfulness colouring sheet uh, if you want to do that and also in the corner we've got a sandpaper prayer and there's also an activity with Louise in the overflow. Um, you might not want to join in with any of the activities, which is fine. Um, just get yourself another brew and just have fellowship with one another and to just have this time to share together. And we'll um, come back about, about 20 past, 25 past. Okay. Mm. Loving God, you know us better than we know ourselves. You search our hearts, minds and souls, seeing us as we really are and confronting us with our true selves. Forgive us when we go astray and cleanse us, Lord. Fill us afresh, mould us into the person you want us to be and help us to feel your love and radiate your love in our lives. Now go in peace and know that you are loved with an everlasting love. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>